Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to use the FET simulation called the Moving Man to examine position time graphs, also known as displacement time graphs, using a constant velocity situation. So what I've done is I've already set up the motion of the man and created this graph that we see in front of us, this position versus time graph. And we're going to discuss the graph and see if we can predict what his motion was when I made the graph originally. So the first thing I want to do is look at where he starts off. And you can see, even in the picture here, at zero seconds, he's at the minus six meter mark of the number line. So there's the zero in the middle. Anything to the right is positive. Anything to the left is negative. His initial position is minus six. And you can see that's represented by the y-intercept of our position time graph. So the y-intercept is our initial position. Now let's examine what happens as he walks. I've got three regions here. Zero seconds to 10 seconds, he has a certain kind of motion. Between 10 and 12 seconds, he has a different motion. And between 12 and 14 seconds, again, a different motion. Let's look at zero to 10 seconds. According to the graph, he starts at the minus six position and ends roughly at the four meter mark. So he starts at the minus six meter mark and ends up somewhere over here at the four meter mark. So he must be moving to the right. And anything to the right we would say is positive. Now even easier, we know that the slope of a position time graph is velocity. And if we just describe this slope, we actually just described his motion, his velocity. So what can we say about the slope? Well, First of all, anything that's slanted from the lower left to the upper right, we say is a positive slope. So right away, we know his velocity is positive. Now, we can also see that the slope of this line between 0 and 10 seconds never changes. It's always the same steepness all the way through. So not only is the slope positive, slanting from lower left to upper right, it's also constant. So we would describe this first region as a constant positive slope. And remember, on a position time graph, slope is velocity, so you literally just replace the word slope with velocity. So between 0 and 10 seconds, he has a positive constant velocity. Now between 10 and 12 seconds, let's do the same thing. Again, the slope does not change. It stays flat between 10 and 12 seconds, so it's constant. It's not positive or negative. It's flat. So that's a zero slope. So constant zero slope or constant zero velocity between 10 and 12 seconds, which makes sense because you can see his position remains at four meters between 10 and 12 seconds. He's literally not moving. Now the last little section, his position starts at the four meter mark and he ends up maybe around the negative four meter mark roughly. So he's starting roughly here on our number line and he ends up to the left. So he's obviously moving to the left, so that's a negative velocity he must possess. But again, all we need to do is describe the slope. It's a constant negative slope, so he has a constant negative velocity between 12 and 14 seconds. Now, let's describe the slope one more time in a little bit more detail. The steepness between 0 and 10 seconds is not as great as the steepness between 12 and 14 seconds. In other words, between 12 and 14 seconds, this is a harsher slope than it is between 0 and 10 seconds. So because the slope represents velocity, we would say he's moving slower between 0 and 10 seconds, and much more quickly when he's changed direction and moving in the negative direction, his final velocity must be quite fast. So our overall summary, constant positive slower velocity, zero velocity, constant negative fast velocity. Let's run it and see how it looks. So there he goes, moving quite slowly to the right. And in fact, if you look at it, he's moving at one meter per second all the way until he reaches the 10 second mark where he stands still for two seconds and then really, really quickly back to the left until he hits the 14 second mark. Now, what does our velocity time graph look like? Now, we've already described what the velocity is doing in those three regions, constant positive, zero, and constant negative. So we should have some sort of idea what the shape of the graph will look like, but we can also get some numbers. The slope literally is the velocity. In the first region, the rise goes from four meters 
down to negative 6, so our rise would be 10 meters, and our run is 10 seconds, making the slope 10 divided by 10. 1 meter per second is the speed or the velocity in that region, positive 1. The second region we already know is 0, that was easy. And in our last region, we go from 4 meters down to negative 4 meters. So our rise is 8, and our run is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and we know it's a negative velocity, so negative 4 would be my final velocity. Let's have a look at our velocity graph and see if it makes sense. Constant positive velocity for 10 seconds. So this region right here corresponds to this on the graph. The value of it stays at 1 meter per second. Then it immediately, right, the slope immediately changes to zero, immediately drops to zero, stays at zero for two seconds, and then it immediately becomes negative four and remains at negative four for another two seconds.